What's going on, gamers? Today, we are going to go over how to install and use the Dave's Potioneering Minecraft mod. Potions in vanilla Minecraft have limited uses, with drinking and splashing effects onto players being their primary ones. This serves as a great purpose for combat situations, but it can sometimes frustrate users wanting an easier and fancier way to use them. On top of this, brewing potions takes time and doesn't allow for complete automation. This is where Dave's Potioneering comes in, a mod that overhauls how you make and use effects in Minecraft, automating the process and adding some great new items in as well. To start the download process, head to Dave's Potioneering on CurseForge's website and near the top of the page click Files and then find your desired version for the mod and press download to the right hand side. Do the same for the Gecko Lib mod because it's a required dependency. Now before you get started with the client install, make sure you have Forge or Fabric installed onto your client. Once that's done, open your Minecraft launcher and head towards the installation section. Find your existing modded profile and then press on the folder icon to the right. And in the newly opened window, you can create or enter the mods folder. Drag and drop the downloaded files into this area and then return to the launcher and click play to start loading the mods. To start with the server install, head to your Apex panel and make sure you're running a server version that matches the mod that you downloaded. Stop the server and then click FTP file access near the top left, log in, and afterwards find and enter the mods directory from the file list. On the next page, click upload in the top left, and then you can drag and drop the mod files into the upload area. Once these files are 100% uploaded, you can use your server name at the top of the page to return to the main panel where you can restart the server. Now, before we jump into the gameplay, if this is helping you so far, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell to stay up to date on any of our future tutorials. When you enter your server with the mod installed, you're going to notice some new items available to craft. Some of these include compound brewing stands, reinforced cauldrons, and other blocks to try out. If you need any additional information about a specific item, then you can hover over it in-game to learn more about it. Dave's Potioneering introduces a new block for creating potions called the compound brewing stand. This requires two crying obsidian, three basalt, one brewing stand, and one hopper. After successfully crafting it, you can begin making potions at twice the normal speed and production. As for doing this, the stand's GUI has four additional ingredient slots to use. This goes from right to left, meaning you can continuously create effects if you order it properly. Once you brew potions, experience is earned from it, unlike in normal Minecraft. This mod also adds gauntlets, which can be used to fend off zombies or damage other players. The first one is made from six copper, which can be upgraded in a smithing table with a netherite ingot. Afterwards, players can create a potioneer gauntlet with six glass bottles, one lever, one hopper, and one netherite gauntlet. This is used to carry potion effects, which can be toggled and switched around by the user. As for applying effects to the gauntlet, you're going to need to craft a potion injector. This requires four diorite, two leather, two glass, and one stone button. After making it, you'll need to gather some supplies and resources to power the gauntlet. You'll need to make lingering potions and collect blaze power to activate it. Once you've done that, place them accordingly in the Potion Injector's GUI menu to power it online. There can be a total of six different effects, allowing flexibility and different combinations to use in combat. Once you've successfully powered that potionary gauntlet, hold it in your hand. Afterwards, press shift and the middle mouse button to start rearranging the pop-up for different effects. Once you're satisfied with the placement, use shift and the scroll wheel to begin switching between potions. Finally, before you use it, you'll need to activate blaze powder, which you can do by shift and right-clicking on your keyboard, which changes the appearance on the gauntlet to show that it's active. Another wonderful feature from Dave's Potioneering is reinforced cauldrons, used to store any potion and be an unlimited water source for bottles. 
For example, players can store instant damage or poison, which changes the liquid's color accordingly. Crafting this block requires one cauldron and six gold. Now, if you're looking to apply damaging effects on a sword or a tool, then coating it in a reinforced cauldron is going to be required. You'll need some dragon's breath to do this, which you can then right click on the cauldron to activate the magic. After doing this, throw your desired item inside of the liquid and wait until the potion is drained. Once this process is complete, collect and hover over it to reveal the applied effect. While the item is in your hand, other players can see particles from it and they can change depending on the potion effect used for the process. As for how many times you can wield it, there are a total of 25 charges, so you will have to recode it after it runs out. Here are a few more extra items that this mod adds, but if you want to learn more about any of them or plan changes, you can check out the official roadmap that will be linked down below. Instead of using a bucket full of milk, players can choose to have milk bottles. These remove any harmful or positive effects from their character, but they have other uses too. For instance, adding milk to a reinforced cauldron allows coated weapons to be cleansed. Invisibility in Minecraft has particle effects that other players can see, which can be frustrating if you're planning a sneaky attack. Fortunately, the mod introduces invisibility too, that removes these visuals from your character altogether. And finally, there are a ton of different umbrellas to use in your game, with some looking cooler than others. These allow players to block incoming potion attacks from splashes. If you want to tweak any aspects of the mod, you'll need to do this through the configuration file. Head towards the FTP file access and log in, and then head towards the world name and server config directory. Once you're there, find and press edit to the right hand side of Dave's Potioneering server file. Make any changes and then click save at the top and then return to the main panel and restart the server to apply the edits. If the mod isn't working, double check that you've uploaded both the mod and the dependency into the mods folder for both the server and the client. Of course, also make sure you're using the correct profile and that you're running a matching version of Forge or Fabric to the mod that you downloaded. If you are looking for a revamp in the way potions are created and used, Dave's Potioneering mod is a great place to start. With the addition of potion automation and weapon coding, it's the perfect way to add something new to the server without changing the gameplay completely. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.